in the section on typewriters because nobody really uses them anymore. Right? It's just not necessary. Um, if if somebody uses a typewriter, that will actually make them stick out in a crowd more than not using one. And in a few minutes, we'll talk about printers and stuff and how even though you may be using a printer, you can be found out. All right. In digital technology, and we're going to do more on cyber crime and stuff like that later in the year. But right now, when we're talking about digital technology, we're talking about printers, fax machines, and photocopiers. And what's the role of the examiner in that? The first is to identify the make and the model of the machine. And that is supposed to be relatively easy. Um, allegedly, there are little marks, microscopic marks, on every page you print off an index printer that will identify what kind of printer it came from. And so that's one way they can do it. Another way is through ink, and we'll talk about that as we go through. Well, that's, that's what we're going to talk about as far as... Mike had a question, how are they going to single you out? There are ways to start doing that. Um, it's also, he's going to compare the question document with test samples from the suspect machine and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the question document and printed exemplars. And what that means is they're going to take the question document, type it into a computer, same font, everything, and print it out on the printer they suspect printed it. All right? Because printers are manufactured, they all have little defects in them. And we'll talk about those in a second here. And every printer makes marks, whether it's from rollers, um, bad inkjet, whatever, every printer, copier, makes a specific mark on it. Now, fax machines, we're not too worried about because if you're receiving the fax, you've got to find the fax that sent it, not necessarily one that received it. Transitory. My third hour had trouble with what this word meant. Transitory. Anybody know what transitory means? Transitory. Transition, transitory. Take the Ori off of it. What do you get? What's transit mean? What's transportation do? Move. Transitory defects are ones that aren't always there. So, if Mr. Dick is making a copy or something, he whites something out, sticks it on the glass. It leaves some of the white out there if it hasn't dried. Now, the next time somebody prints, they got a little dot on there because the white out is on the glass. But if I go to copy, lift it up, and see the mark, what am I going to do? Let's see the white out on the glass. Clean it. So these are marks that aren't there all the time. They may be because somebody put dirty paper in there or... You know, if the machine hasn't been cleaned. Some of you have probably gotten copies that have like black streaks on, and that's because somebody screwed up and got the wheels dirty on the machine, and so as it went through, it copied those marks. Um, fax machine headers. They tell you a lot of information. Um, transmitting terminal identifier. It's a big word for saying phone number. It just tells you where it came from. And most people don't think about all the information that gets transmitted when they're trying to use a machine like this. And the biggest thing is it tells you where it came from. What can I do with that phone number? Well, I can call it, but what happens if I call a fax machine? What do I hear? So I can find out from the phone company who it belongs to. Then I go to that fax machine. What can I get off the fax machine? Don't say a fax. What? Fax. What? No. Fingerprints. Fingerprints. Because in order to use the fax machine, you have to touch it. 
And so. <laughs> okay, there's the criminal in the class. Um, and a lot of times, it fax may send a different type style than was original on the original document. And there's a database of this that you can get to. Okay, toner. Um, the type of toner or ink used can be specifically matched to a machine. Now, on this Google map I'm holding up, came out a printer over here. What's this printed with? Toner or ink? Came from over there. Ink. This came out of the copier. Toner. The difference is toner gets bonded to the paper. Ink is just on top of it. If this gets wet, what happens? It gets smeared. If this gets wet, nothing really happens. And that's because if you ever open up the copier here, um, it says careful hot surface. And that's the last stage before it gets sent out of the printer. And this runs through that and the hot electrostatic charge will attach it to the paper permanently. And so that's one way you can um, determine what's going on. The surface morphology. What's the surface of the paper look like? And that's look under microscope. What do the letters look like that are attached to the paper? How are they attached? And the chemical composition of the toner or the ink. And I know I'm flying through this. How was the how was the print put on there? Thermal dot matrix. This is old dot matrix is how they used to little they just spit out little dots and made letters. Thermal, you see that all the time. If you go to the gas station and get a receipt. Um, well, this is a thermal receipt, right? This is a receipt that burns the paper in order to um, print on it. So, and if you leave this this out in the sun, it will actually all turn black because the paper is designed to be burned, and so it will turn all black. Um, some of it is just age, but some of these, some paper is not, um, this is, this is thermal sensitive, but like the ink ones that actually put ink down, if it sits in the sun, it'll burn the ink off of the leaf paper. It's just, okay, it's not designed to be a permanent <laughs> So, now, continuing on, like I said, we're going to kick through pretty quick. Non-impactor inkjet or lasers, they basically lay down stuff. Inkjet printers actually have little jets that squirt the ink out in various combinations to make the colors on the page. And laser printers do the same thing. Mechanical and printing characteristics. What kind of paper, you know, what marks are left by the machine, all right? Because it's a mechanical process, the paper is going to be damaged. What kind of paper you use? Most places buy their paper by bulk. And so it's, you know, you can narrow down who buys this kind of paper. And you can start locating where it's done. Now. Alterations and erasures. We're going to do this part today and obliterations tomorrow. All right. An alteration is the hide in original intent of the document. Intent of the document. All right. That means you're changing a check or a contract to bring something different to give you an advantage. All right. So that's what they mean by that. You're just changing something. Could be a dollar amount. You're there to perpetrate a forgery or signing somebody else's name. And 
in order to erase things. Now, somebody in the other class talked about the difference between the word erasure and eraser. An eraser is what you've done to the paper. And you've done it with an eraser. All right? Some people just use a plain old rubber eraser to do things. Some people use sandpaper. What does sandpaper do other than get rid of the ink or the pencil on there? Rubs off the paper. May rub off the paper. It scratches the paper. You know, it damages the paper. Not sure why you use sandpaper because that, under close scrutiny, would show up. Razor blade. This is especially true for ink. All right. Now, way back in the olden days when I used to make maps, we did them on mylar, thick mylar. It's what they used to put in blueprint machines. In order to correct mistakes, you took a, a um, razor blade or a knife and scraped off the ink and then redrew it. So that's another way to get stuff off. And like I said, a knife. Now, all of this disturbs the paper fibers. And under microscopic, microscopic, you can see that. And some people try to alter the ink different. It differs from the original. Maybe black ink, but it's not black ink from a big pen. It may be black ink from a uniball. So, and you can see those differences chemically. Um, and using different kinds of light. Some people use strong oxidate oxidizing agents. Um, heard them and catch me if you can about using acetone. That will cut ink. It will dissolve ink. And some people and what? Napoxy. And so what it does is it takes the ink off some Yeah. That comes napoxy. Yeah. And oh that's what you're saying. And so what they're doing is cleaning off that whole thing. And what I saw, and there's a YouTube video of this, is somebody took the total, all the ink off a $5 bill and then made it into a $100 bill by running it through an inkjet printer, which is a little shady to do because they don't make the true colors. They remove the color. Um, sometimes the color is not, the change isn't apparent in room light. And so you got to look at it under a microscope or use UV. will make the light fluoresce or the ink it fluoresce. Sometimes just infrared and blue-green light or infrared sensitive film. And then visible ink residue is visible under infrared. We don't have an infrared light. Or it also differentiates ink. The thing is, is, let's say we got Sam and Chris, they're signing a contract. Well, they may be signing a contract with different ink. It doesn't prove anything, it's just that they have different, two different pens that day. But if you're signing any legal papers and your husband and wife or partners in business, and you go in, a good lawyer will do what? They'll get the same pen to you. All right, you use the same pen, then, you know, there's no question later on that um, you were both there at the same time. Okay, and that's it.